It's almost 11 p.m. in the green room right now, and I just took three bites from three different pythons. Let's compare them. Welcome to the green room. I'm Bob Bledsoe. You know, sometimes someone will get their first python and they're very excited about it, but they're a little bit concerned about what happens if they get bit. Or maybe they've had their snake for a while and they're just sort of dreading the day that it happens. So I had this crazy idea the other night. I had a bunch of snakes in food mode, including bear here, and I thought to myself, you know, I bet I could get three different species of python to bite me if I really worked at it. It'll be fun to compare the bites. I don't think I want to be a part of this. Say hi to my brother Kent, our cameraman. Kent, I already did it. You weren't there. Who drove you to the hospital? Surprisingly, no hospital needed. You got lucky this time. What is he even doing? I generally try to avoid getting bit, but I thought this experiment might quell some fears of new keepers. It's really important when you have an animal, a snake especially, that you are confident in working with them and you're not fearful. Because if you come at that snake nervous and fearful, they can sense that. And, you know, it kind of makes them go, wait a second, what's going on here? Should I be nervous too? And that's when they're more likely to bite. I don't have any snakes that would ever strike defensively. I couldn't even get them to, even if I do this with bear, it doesn't make him defensive at all because he knows me. So if I'm going to take a bite from any of my snakes, it's got to be a food bite. And that's worse than a defensive strike uh, because they're going to strike and hang on and, and wrap. This also allows me to practice some techniques of getting them to let go of me other than spraying them with this whiskey bottle. This looks like a prop that I made, but it's not. It says whiskey for bite. <laughs> it actually has whiskey in it. And I made it for Maya, my black-headed python, because when I got her, she was she was quite a biter because she thought everything was food. I kind of instinctively reach for that. Anytime Maya has bit me or Echo, my super dwarf retic, has bit me, I've always instinctively just reached for this bottle and sprayed. But I don't really like spraying their mouth with whiskey. So I wanted to try a couple other techniques, including just spraying them with water. The other thing that Garrett Hartle over at Reach Out Reptiles has talked about is chewing on the end of the snake's tail. You just do it. You just chew on it like it's, like it's corn, but lightly, not where you're hurting them. But the sensation of it just is supposed to make them kind of go, oh my gosh, what's happening at my tail? And they let go of you to see what's going on back there. One thing to note is that none of the snakes that I used for this experiment are full grown. I used Bear here, and he is, you know, say like a teenage size snake. He's a year and a half, and he's about a thousand grams. This is not nearly the biggest ball. The, the biggest ball python I have is 4,000 grams. That's Damara. Uh, so I used Bear because he was one of three snakes that were in food mode that night. I'm glad that I used this size because I'm also using Echo, my super dwarf reticulated python, and Maya, my black headed python, and they are both sort of teenage size snakes for their species. They're not little babies, but they're also certainly not adults yet. And I would say that the head size, the, the head and mouth size of all of these three species are about the same right now. And I'm okay with that because most people that fear the bite from their snake have a baby ball python. It's it's not even necessarily a super dwarf or a blackhead. Maybe it is, but uh, it's usually a baby. So we're gonna we're gonna work with some medium sized snakes that are much larger than babies, but not as big as adults. And maybe in a couple of years, when my super dwarfs and my blackhead are adult size, then we'll do this bite comparison with adults. That'll be fun. I started the evening off with bear. Now, one thing to note about ball pythons is for the most part, now every individual can be different, but for the most part, if you have a ball python that's in food mode and you take them out of their cage to handle them, they're probably gonna go get out of food mode right away. Whereas that's a little bit different for Echo, my super dwarf retic. I could, she's out right now. I'm watching her kind of roam around. She's in food mode hunting right now. And if I was holding her, she would keep hunting and she'd probably bite my arm. In fact, we might do that. We might, I might hold her and we'll see what she does. But anyway, the point is with Bear, I started off with him and he's never bit me before. He's never tried to bite me before, but he has a very strong food drive. If he thinks other snakes are being fed, he's out looking for it and he immediately strikes hard and fast. So, I was a little surprised that when I put my arm in front of his face the first time, he didn't strike it right away because he was out and ready to eat. So I had to scent my arm with, with a mouse. I had to rub the mouse on my arm a little bit to get him to strike. So here's Bear. He's bitten and wrapped. And so now what I'm going to do to make this easy, this is a food bite, obviously. So 
I'm just gonna chew on his tail for a second. Does not work with ball pythons. I'd rather spray water in his mouth. There we go. There we go, water was good. Okay, so there's bear's bite before I wipe it off. And then uh, let's wipe it off. There's, I don't, I feel nothing right here. If I could feel pressure when he bit, uh, there wasn't really pain it, because the teeth are really so small. Let's take an F10 wipe and just do a little dab there. A little dabby dab. So there is bear's teeth mark. So these right here in the middle are the teeth on the roof of the mouth. We got the bottom teeth right there. We got the top teeth right here and then the teeth on the roof of the mouth. There's no soreness at all with this. Like I don't even feel it. I just pushed on it and I felt it a little bit, but now I don't. There's nothing. Maybe I'll feel it later, but there's nothing right now. So let's try the next snake. Next was Maya, my black-headed python, who out of the three snakes I thought would be the easiest to get to bite me. Whenever she's just roaming around in her enclosure, she's looking for food. And if I touch her body with my hand, she can feel the warmth on her body. This doesn't work if I do it with a hook, but with my hand, she feels the warmth and she whips around with her mouth open. So she's not even looking to see what it is. I'm used to this. This has happened so many times that I'm used to the, the reflex of just pulling away, which is what I did. Like I was trying to get her to bite me by touching her body. She whipped around with an open mouth and I jerked away because I'm just used to doing that. And then I tried to get her to bite me and I was really surprised by her polite manners. I think she realized it was me and she wouldn't bite, which I thought was kind of cool because sometimes I wonder if Maya gets it or not. And this shows me that she might understand that even though she's very hungry, my arm is not food. So I decided to just close her enclosure go to Echo, and then come back to Maya later. So let's go to Echo trying to eat my arm. But before we do that, let's check out Kent's Corner. Hi, and welcome to Kent's Corner, the show that all the networks are jealous of. Today, since my brother thinks he's invincible and he's all Johnny Knoxville, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go and stick my hand in a hot bowl of soup. Then I'm gonna walk into a dense forest and get mauled by a raccoon. Then I'm gonna jump off a cliff using a hang glider that I bought at Goodwill. And then I'm gonna strap explosives to my butt and go get a job at a firework stand and endanger all my fellow employees and the people living around. And then I'm gonna- I think we get the idea, Kent. But can you get a job at a firework stand? Because you might like that better than snakes. They said I didn't have enough experience. In pyrotechnics? In speaking politely to customers. That sounds about right. Let me tell you what my expectations were before I did this whole thing as we acknowledge the fine channel supporters over on Patreon. They're called the Horde of Keepers. I wasn't confident that I could get a ball python to bite me just because none of them ever confuse me with food. Look at this. Uh, Danny signed up on this tier and we had to start a new board. I was very confident though that I could get the black-headed python and the super dwarf to bite me. They attempt to bite me often enough that I figured we could make that happen. I figured if I could get all three to bite me, that Maya, the black-headed python, would be the worst looking bite because blackheads have a pretty strong bite pressure. I don't know that that's ever been scientifically looked at, but everybody says that, that they've got a really strong bite pressure, and they do. I've felt it. It is strong. Uh, some people say in the wild that they don't even wrap their prey. They just, they just bite really hard. I figured that Echo's bite would be the longest lasting because it seems like super dwarves have longer teeth, but I actually am not sure if that's true when, when the snakes are all the same size at least. Because you know when I look at a super dwarf yawn or a reticulated python yawn, they open their mouth and it looks like they have longer front teeth and you know almost like fangs, kind of like a Amazon tree boa has. It seems like that, but I think that's the structure of their gums makes those teeth look longer because when you look at the skull of a reticulated python, the teeth look about the same as a ball python or, or a black-headed python. So I think the teeth size might be all the same, although when they get to adult size, it just depends on the size of the snake. But my point is here, it seems like Echo can dig her teeth deeper into me than the other snakes, so I figured that that bite would last longer. Maybe she can, I, I don't know for sure. Here's our channel sponsor. As it turns out, I was wrong on many counts. So let's find out what those other two snakes did. Thanks again to the Patreon supporters and our channel sponsor, Black Box Cages. Echo has not been fed yet. 
tomorrow is her is her feeding day so she's in food mode right now and she was the other night i was just picking her up and she bit my finger so we'll talk about that oh she got some teeth in it only feels like she got a couple so the finger is not a great spot to be bit in so i do feel that but let's talk about what she did the other night and then we'll talk about this one hey young lady can you let go of me please so I was pretty confident that I could get Echo to bite me because she's bitten me a number of times before. I'm really careful with her, so I usually don't get bit. But if you've seen me on camera, either in my live streams or especially on the Patreon-only live streams, you've seen Echo bite me when I'm not paying attention. So today's bite happened. I was paying attention, but I was paying attention to her tail and not her front end. Uh, and she's definitely looking for food. So what surprised me the other night is that she didn't immediately go for my arm. I had to scent my arm with the mouse like I had to for bear. I wish the camera was positioned a little better here, but half of her body was in her sky hide, which is attached to the, to the roof of the enclosure. And she bit me and tried to pull me into her sky hide. So she's using that hide as leverage to pull on my arm. <laughs> and that makes the bite a little bit worse when you've got some teeth sunk in and she's pulling, right? She's a little snake, but she's very strong. So I had to reach in and grab the sky hide and detach it from the ceiling so she would stop pulling on me. So I wanted to try that tail chewing bit on Echo as well. First, I started by just using my fingernail and pinching her tail and that didn't work. So I chewed on it a little bit, but it didn't seem to, do, like she had no reaction to it. So then I thought, well, I'll try the water and I went to reach for the bottle and Echo just let go on her own. Oh, there we go. There she let go. Okay, here's Echo's bite. I actually thought this was gonna be worse because she got me pretty good, but she didn't get the back teeth. Well, now I can't feel anything. I was feeling one tooth. Yeah, now I can feel it. Right there that went in a little bit further. I can feel it, but it doesn't hurt. It's just that I can feel it compared to everything else I don't feel. And again, echoes, just like bears, felt like a pinch. Like if you were to just pinch your skin, you can't really tell that there's teeth in, in your skin you know, until, until you look. So let's see if I can get Maya to bite me. Okay, now back to Maya, where I scented my arm again, like I like I did with the other two. I can't believe that I had to do that with Maya, but uh, she that worked immediately. And I picked her up and I pulled her over to the other camera where I was gonna try the tail chewing thing. But A, I forgot to turn on that camera, and B, she let go before I could do anything anyway. So that surprised me. She hasn't bit me in a very long time. And I think that she just realized that I wasn't food and so she let go, which is not what's happened in the past when she has bit. Maya just got me on the wrist. I felt it more than the other two snakes. It was more than just a pinch. I could, I could feel it, but it wasn't excruciatingly painful. Like it was, it, you know, I just felt it more. Um, but she caused less damage, I think. There, there are tooth marks there that don't have blood on them. And that's where the teeth didn't even sink into my skin. But she was biting hard, so I don't understand that. It's That's really interesting. That ended up, I think, being the least consequential bite of all three. So again, here's Bear. Bear was was the worst just because of the way he, he grabbed me. Like, he, he got a full mouth grab. Here's Echoes again. And she got me just the front... Uh, the you know the sort of the, the front of her mouth and here's Maya's there's some there's some more a little bit more blood coming up as it developed I haven't wiped it off yet so the deal with Maya's regardless of the actual damage that's caused because that's kind of negligible like it doesn't really the obviously blood comes out of your skin if you have the tiniest hole poked so it always looks worse than it is but I will say with Maya she, the black-headed python has a stronger bite for sure. They're pinching harder. Also, she got me in the wrist. That, that might be a more sensitive spot than forearm. You know, like I was trying to go for the forearm because I didn't really want to be bit in sensitive spots. I don't need to do that for this video, right? Like I don't have to make it that bad. Uh, but she ended up getting me on a wrist. It hurt more that when she was biting down hurt more than the other snakes, but this right now, I can't feel it. I, I don't feel any of them right now. Um, so once they let go, the the pinch feeling is gone. All right, so this one's developing a little bit more. Okay, so she got, so you can see she, she got some teeth in. 
Let's wipe these off and look at them. I'm gonna just do one other wipe down. I'm using F10 to wipe off. This is a veterinary grade disinfectant and it's used on animals for wounds. So uh, it's gonna work just fine on humans as well. Okay, so Echoes, I'm noticing right now. So you can see where that red spot is. That was where, the, where one of her long teeth dug in, but I don't feel it. I think I felt it a little bit when like right after she she bit me i could feel it for a minute but it wasn't it wasn't extremely painful i just i'm i'm just trying to notice what i'm feeling and uh there's bears after wiping it off i mean that's good those are good teeth marks so this was bears upper teeth right here you can see a little bit of red on the inside that's his, the teeth that are on the roof of his mouth. Snakes have their regular row of teeth, and then on the roof of their mouth, they have a second row of teeth on the roof of their mouth. So you can see that right there. There's a couple of those roof of the mouth teeth that just dug in. And then obviously the, the bottom jaw went right there. So there's Maya's after being wiped off. That's really nothing. I mean, she, a few teeth sunk in. Clearly there were teeth on me, on my skin that didn't even sink in, even though she was pinching my skin harder than any of the other snakes did. So this one hurt worse in the moment. These two didn't hurt at all. Take your, take your hand and just do this with your, this one now I can feel, who is this? Oh, this is bears. So bears, I think I can feel because I'm sweating in it. You know, a bite from a python of this type and this size is so inconsequential. You know, I've said that the most traumatic part of it is just the, the startling, how fast they, they do it. But if I had a bird channel, I would never do this with parrots or, or parakeets even. I would never do it if I had a hamster channel or any kind of rodent, you know, rats, mice, uh, dogs, cats. What other things do people have? Ferrets. You don't want to get bit by a ferret. I'm just trying to name all the pets, but you get the point, right? Fish, I guess. Fish would be okay to be bit by. There's good reason that just about every other animal is going to deliver a much more significant bite than a snake of this type and size. And that has to do with teeth structure. When we talk about teeth in any animal, you know, and how like how dangerous it is, we always talk about, oh, they have really sharp teeth, right? But the fact is that a snake that has needle sharp teeth that's actually what you want to get bit by because if it's literally needle sharp, that tooth is going to go into your skin with almost no pressure at all. And if they're shorter teeth, like all of these snakes have, it's not going to go in that far and you really won't feel that wound. I'm saying wound in quotes because it's not much of one, but you just don't feel it. The reason it hurts so bad if you get bit by a mammal or even a bird is because their teeth are not needle sharp. They might have sharp teeth, but, but it's actually rounded at the end. And that tooth or beak has to push on the skin so hard and pinch your skin so hard that your skin literally tears open. It's not a needle poking through your skin. It's, it's ripping your your skin open. That hurts really bad for a very long time. I got bit last year by a dog and it was a minor bite. He only got two teeth in, one on top, one on bottom of the of the longer, the I guess those are the canine teeth. Not that big of a deal of a bite, but because it was a situation where my skin was ripped open, the dog didn't have needle sharp teeth, there was it was painful for days. You know, it didn't get infected or anything, but I felt it for about three days. These bites, this bite, that I just took from Echo, which now you can see the, the red marks. I don't even feel that. This happened, uh, let's see, I would say seven minutes ago. Don't even feel it. And, and I also didn't feel it a minute after it happened. So um, it's because it's like getting a little shit. You just don't feel it. And they don't have bone crushing jaw pressure like a parrot. So again, different snakes could, can deliver a different damage depending on their species and things like that. But with the snakes that I used here, and certainly with this little boy, the bites are really insignificant. This little boy is very well-mannered and, and would never bite, but I brought him out because he just shed probably an hour ago and look how pretty he is. So now hopefully you're less fearful about getting bit but do you still have a snake that's a crazy biter and you want to tame it down? Check out this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. Look at this young man. That calico. This dark brown streak on his neck I love. It's so cool.